Hello friends, it's Kayla. Today is another casual weekend vlog where we hang out in my bed and talk about upcoming books that I'm excited to read one day. I like these videos because I feel like a lot of books I hear about I add to like my want to read or on my radar shelves on Goodreads but I never really get a chance to talk about them again until I don't know like they're most anticipated of the year or they're in my TBR but a lot of these don't fit into that like they're not my most anticipated because sometimes they don't even have covers or full synopsis synopses but they're just things that I've heard about that I think sound intriguing. So we're literally just gonna go through what I've most recently added to my Goodreads TBR. And I'm gonna hope that I didn't already talk about any of these in previous ones, because this is the third or fourth time I've done this. So, first up, I have nothing to show you. It's just me and my face for however long this video is. Um, there's one called 10 Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston, which I think, I guess I could pull some books to show you. Hold on. Okay, I've now destroyed my bookshelves, but I'm more prepared for this conversation. So Ashley Elson wrote 10 Blind Dates, which I loved so much, and I remember saying I love her entire family and all the side characters in here, and now 10 Truths and a Dare showed up in my Goodreads, and it says a new story focuses on two different teens from the large Italian-American family of the first novel. When they swap phones and life challenges in the party circuit run up to high school graduation, disastrous but transformative consequences unfold set for spring 2021. I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for that. Then Dahlia Adler announced she has a book coming out in 2021 called Cool for the Summer. So Dahlia Adler is the one who edited the anthology of Edgar Allan Poe stories that I love so much. She's also doing, what's it called, the Shakespeare one next year, This Madness Lies. And I'm trying to think if I've read any of her standalones. I don't think I have, but I think she mostly writes queer stories. I've read a ton of short stories from her. Like she had a story in All Out, the queer anthology, the radical element anthology. The Cool for the Summer says it's about a girl named Lara who finally lands the guy of her dreams only to have her unexpectedly female summer fling transfer to her school for their senior year. So a nice little love triangle. Oh, she actually left a comment, a review on her own book. It says Goodreads deleted the description of the book, so here's a little more info. Uh, landing Chase Harding is Laura's biggest dream come true until her unexpectedly female summer fling transferred to her school. If she's got the guy, why can't she stop thinking about the girl? Cool for the Summer is a bi-questioning Greece with better life choices. Yes. I love how there are trends with um, like different kind of retellings like right now Little Women. Everyone's doing retellings of Little Women and I think this is like the third Greece retelling or book inspired by Greece that I've heard of. Next is Miss Meteor. Originally it was on here just as Meteor and I've been talking about it non-stop how it's Taylor K. Mejia and Anne-Marie McLemore doing a collab. I feel like we saw a lot of YA author collabs in like 2013 and 14 like around that time and now we're seeing a resurgence. There's always been like little collabs but I feel like collabs are really a thing right now. So Taylor K. Mejia wrote uh, We Set the Dark on Fire, which I didn't love, but I did say I will read anything she does in the future. And of course, we know Anna Micklemore is just bae, like kind of my all-time everything. So I talked about this one before, but it didn't have an official title or cover or synopsis. So I'll show you the cover. I don't love it, but it's on trend for YA books right now. And this says there hasn't been a winner of the Miss Meteor beauty pageant who looks like Lita Perez or Chicky 
Quintanilla in all its history, but that's not the only reason Lita wants to enter the contest or why her best friend Chicky wants to help her. The road to being Miss Meteor isn't about perfect, it's about sharing who you are with the world and loving the parts of yourself no one else understands. So to pull off the unlikeliest underdog story in pageant history, Lita and Chicky are going to have to forget the past and imagine a future where girls like them are more than enough. They are everything. It says September 2020, so I'm excited to read that in fall. I love small town vibes. Another cover reveal is Horrid by Katrina Leno. I don't think the cover was out when I made my most anticipated video. Um, the cover is very spooky. Speaking of Katrina Leno, she just got a recover of Summer of Salt for the paperback version. And uh, she was saying that she's excited it tells the vibe a little more. Like this looks a little more like light summery contemporary when actually it's a really moody story. So that's pretty cool. But Horrid is another September release. It says, as the cold New England autumn arrives and Jane settles into her new home, she finds solace in old books and memories of her dad. She steadily begins making new friends, but also faces bullying from the resident Bad Seed, struggling to tamp down her own worst nature in response. Jane's mom also seems to be spiraling with the return of her childhood home, but she won't reveal why. Then Jane discovers that the storage room her mom has kept locked isn't for storage at all. It's a little girl's bedroom, left untouched for years, and not quite as empty of inhabitants as it appears. Is it grief, mental illness, or something more horrid? Oh my. So I love Katrina Leno's writing. I love that it's contemporary with some magical stuff. You Must Not Miss is a perfect example of that. This got a new cover as well. We're rebranding and we love it. Definitely an interesting synopsis. I'll read absolutely anything Katrina Leno writes. So, super cool. What's next? Wendy Walker. So, I don't know if I didn't know she was coming out with something or maybe it was called something different, but this kind of showed up out of nowhere as another September 2020 release. This one I didn't really like, All Is Not Forgotten, but Emma in the Night was quite good, and I'm excited to love a Wendy Walker one day. This one's called Don't Look For Me, and it says, the greatest risk isn't running away, it's running out of time. The car abandoned miles from home, the note found at a nearby hotel, the shattered family that couldn't be put back together, they called it a walk away. It happens all the time. Women disappear, desperate to leave their lives behind and start over. But is that what really happened to Molly Clark? Oh, she also wrote The Night Before. Oh, I'm just kidding. She's written quite a few books. But I feel like she also had like a rebrand a couple years ago and that's what made me pick up uh, her books to begin with. I think The Night Before I also gave three stars. So she's been one of those thriller authors. You know what? Most thriller authors are hit or miss for me. There's not a lot that I love immediately and love all their stuff. Next up, I've talked about one of my most anticipated releases of the year a couple times called A Lazzo by Darcy Little Badger. I've read a short story from her before in Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, which is an indigenous LGBT sci-fi anthology. And now she has a full-length novel, which I've talked about a couple times, but it just got a cover. And it's freaking beautiful. I'm pretty sure we have an asexual protagonist it says, imagine an America very similar to our own. It's got homework, best friends, and pistachio ice cream. There are some differences. This America has been shaped dramatically by the magic monster's knowledge and legends of its people, those indigenous and those not. Some of these forces are charmingly everyday, like the ability to make an orb of light appear or travel across the world through rings of fungi. But other forces are less charming and should never see the light of day. Alatso lives in this slightly stranger America. She can raise the ghosts of dead animals, a skill passed down through generations of her Lipan Apache family. Her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes, but she's going to do more than pry. The picture-perfect facade of Willow B masks gruesome secrets and she will rely on her wits, skills, and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. This again, is a fall release for 2020. Oh my god, there's gonna be so much to read at the end of this year. And there's gonna be illustrations throughout this by Rovina Kai. That name sounds familiar. Oh right, she did And the Ocean Was Our Sky. Um, I read the arc of that, so the illustrations weren't quite finalized, but I love her work. Next up, this book called The Summer of Everything showed up in my feed on Goodreads. Uh, 
I don't love the cover, but that's okay. <laughs> this comes out in August. It's by Julian Winters, and I'm going to try to remember why it grabbed my attention. Comic book geek Wesley Hudson excels at two things, slacking off at his job and pining after his best friend Nico. Advice from his friends, 90s alt-rock songs, and online dating articles aren't helping much with his secret crush. And his dream job at Once Upon a Page, the local used bookstore, is threatened when a coffee shop franchise wants to buy the property. To top it off, his annoying brother needs wedding planning advice. When all three problems converge, Wes comes face to face with the one thing he's been avoiding, adulthood. <laughs> aren't we all? Now confronted with reality, can Wes balance saving the bookstore and his strained sibling relationship? Can he win the heart of his crush too? I am really into books set in bookstores recently. He is the one who wrote Running With Lions. He also has a book called How To Be Remy Cameron. And I just see an anthology with his name attached called Up All Night, which I've never heard of. And it comes out in 2021. So now I need to share that with you too. This says... It's edited by Laura Silverman, and it's a YA anthology about what can happen in the hours between sunset and sunrise. Contributors include Brandi Colbert, Catherine Glasgow, Maureen Gu, Tiffany D. Jackson, Amanda Joy, Nina LaCour, Karen M. McManus, Anna Mariano, Marique Nijekamp, Kayla Whaley, Julian Winters, and Francesca Zappia. And nobody has added it to their TBR because nobody knows it exists, including myself five seconds ago. Amazing, a new anthology for 2021. Who knew? Now we both do. I feel like um, more and more books are being talked about um, featuring male-male relationships and romances written by women lately. And I just wanna make sure that we're reading some more own voices stuff even though I'm really over the term own voices. Okay, what else we got on my list? A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This doesn't have its final cover, I hope. No, cover to come, okay. I think I added this because, let's just read the synopsis together, but I think this was like a dark academia uh, sapphic pitch. So, pitched as the secret history meets genuine fraud and the craft, like, do I need to know any more than that? It's the story of Felicity Morrow, a senior returning to school after her girlfriend's tragic death, only to meet a new student and teenage literary prodigy who transferred to research the school's bloody history and recruits Felicity into a murderous experiment of their own. Set for 2021. You bet I'm gonna read the shit out of that. Next, let's talk Wonderland by Zoe Stage because... I added this to my TBR before I even realized the author. I did not like this book. Baby Teeth was not my thing, but I love the cover of this so much. And it says, if Shirley Jackson wrote The Shining, it might look like this novel. It says a mother must become a protector when unnatural forces threaten her family's new and improved life in a rural farmhouse. This is going to come out in summer and I'm excited because as I was reading Baby Teeth I remember thinking like is this supernatural? I like the paranormal like weird vibes of it but it didn't quite go there and it sounds like this one might so we're gonna read it. It says Orla must find a way to communicate with, not just resist, this unknown entity that is coming to her family, calling to them from the land, in the earth, beneath the trees, and in their minds. Yes. And then the most exciting one of this entire conversation is One by One by Ruth Ware, which is coming out in 2020. And I had no idea. I guess I wasn't supposed to have an idea because there's still no cover anxiously anticipating it. Let me just tell you, I, every single Ruth Ware I've read, I've liked more than the last. So, and then her most recent one, her upcoming one, sounds like everything that I've ever wanted in a thriller in general. So my expectations are getting way too high. She's written some stuff I don't like and written some stuff I loved. Uh, she wrote my favorite thriller of last year. And this one says, snow is falling in the exclusive alpine ski resort of Saint Antoine. 
as the shareholders and directors of Snoop, the hottest new music app, gather for a make or break corporate retreat to decide the future of the company. Okay, I didn't know how to do with a music app. When I read the blurb earlier, uh, it just was talking about how it was a corporate retreat. At stake is a billion dollar dot com buyout that could make them all millions or leave some out in the cold. The clock is ticking on the offer and with the group irrevocably split, tensions are running high. When an avalanche cuts the chalet off from help and one board member goes missing in the snow, the group is forced to ask, would someone resort to murder to get what they want? Dun dun dun! I love books set in the snow. I really like Sherry Lapina's An Unwanted Guest, which kind of has these vibes. I love an isolated mystery. I love an insulated, insular, ins I don't know the word. Mystery where like we have really limited cast and they're all stuck somewhere and it's set in like, you know, the mountains. Oh my God. I just, I want to love it. I bet I'll love it. I guess they're going to start dying one by one. Like classic mystery shit. What else can we talk about? Sean and McGuire. Okay, so she announced the title of her next Wayward Children book. This is my second favorite series of all time. It's the, as an adult, the longest series I've ever committed to. So of course we've got Every Heart a Doorway, Down Among the Sticks and Bones. What was next? I always mix up these two. I think it was uh, Beneath the Sugar Sky and then In an Absent Dream. And then this January, we got Come Tumbling Down. They always come out in January and it's my favorite part of January. So next January we're going to see Across the Green Grass Fields and apparently this is a really good entry point for people unfamiliar with the series um, and you can start there. Technically you don't have to have read any of the books to read any of the other respective novellas. It says it offers a great jumping on point for readers new to the series. So this one follows a girl named Reagan. She loves horses and when she suddenly finds herself thrust through a doorway that asks her to be sure before swelling her hole, Reagan must learn to live in a world filled with centaurs, kelpies, and other magical equines. A world that expects its human visitors to step up and be heroes. I, I'm gonna read it regardless of, you know, who it's following or what it is because I desperately love this series. I've also had this book on my radar for a while called Darling and I wasn't even paying attention to who it was written by. Um, and then recently I read and loved The Weight of the Stars by Kate Ingram and realized this book that I've been interested in for this past like year uh, is actually that author. So I can bump it up even higher on my want to read. I add a lot of books to my on my radar shelf because if especially if it's an author I've never read from before like I have no idea what the cover is even going to look like it's if it's even going to look like my kind of book. So this one was sitting on that shelf but I can officially move it to most anticipated because I've read the author now. This one is set for 2021 and all it says is it's a retelling of Peter Pan in modern day Chicago in which Wendy Darling follows Peter and his lost boys through the city's nightlife and underbelly, only to discover that Peter isn't what he seems, and the lost boys are in more trouble than they realize. Again, I feel like there are trends with retellings, and a couple years ago, I think maybe like 2015, we saw a few Peter Pan retellings, and I read m multiple of them, uh, so I'm interested to see what this one turns out to be. Again, no cover, but I can't wait to see it. Also on my list is a new book by Tiffany D. Jackson. You may have read allegedly by her. I loved Monday's Not Coming by her and she has one called Grown coming out. Is it this year? Oh I'm obsessed with this cover so much. So it says yeah another September 2020 release and the synopsis starts with a bang. Corey Fields is dead when Enchanted Jones wakes up with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night, no one, the police and Corey's fans included, has more questions than she does. All she really knows is that this isn't how things are supposed to be. Corey was Enchanted's ticket to stardom. So again, like one by one, um, 
this has to do with kind of like a celebrity situation like the music industry the film industry isn't something that I love reading I've established that in a few videos but the thing is if it's an author that I know I love I'm gonna give it a go Tiffany D Jackson writes like um, they're a lot more harder hitting and mysterious than I feel like their covers depict sometimes but I, I love her covers before there was a dead body enchanted was an aspiring singer struggling with her tight-knit family's recent move to the suburbs while trying to find her place as the lone black girl in high school but the legendary R&B artist Corey Fields spots her at an audition and suddenly her dream of being a professional singer takes flight but now he's dead and she's being blamed so there are some books like On the Come Up by Angie Thomas which is kind of in the same vein I really like that so I don't hate all you know books that fit into that vibe next on my list I have The Shadows by Alex North I would be showing you The Whisper Man and holding it up but I just lent it out to my mom I really like that these covers fit together it's very pleasing and this one comes out in summer July it says it's a haunting new thriller author of The Whisper Man it actually kind of sounds like it has some similar plot points to The Whisper Man and I feel like The Whisper Man if it did a couple different things I could have really loved it so I'm definitely down to reading more from this author it says you knew a teenager like Charlie Crabtree a dark imagination a sinister smile always on the outside of the group some part of you suspected he might be capable of doing something awful 25 years ago Crabtree did just that committing a murder so shocking that it's attracted the strange kind of infamy that only exists on the darkest corners of the internet and inspired more than one copycat Paul Adams remembers the case too well Crabtree and his victim were Paul's friends Paul has slowly put his life back together and now his mother old and senile has taken a turn for the worse though every inch of him resists it's time to come home it's not long before things start to go wrong okay I'm gonna stop there because we all know mystery thriller synopsis give they say too much so that one is definitely on my radar I have one called Lakewood by Megan Giddings that the cover is just very interesting to me this comes out oh my god this month it says it's a startling debut about class and race uh, we've got vibes of the handmaid's tale and the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks it says when Lena Johnson's beloved grandmother dies and the full extent of the family debt is revealed the black millennial drops out of college to support her family and takes a job in the mysterious and remote town of Lakewood Michigan on paper her new job is too good to be true high paying no out-of-pocket medical expenses a free place to live all Lena has to do Lena Lena has to do is participate in a secret program and lie to her friends and family about the research being done at Lakewood. An eye drop that makes brown eyes blue, a medication that could be a cure for dementia, golden pills promise to make all bad thoughts go away. So maybe this is like a sci-fi thriller? It sounds interesting. It sounds like a Jordan Peele movie. Next up, I'm very interested to check out Body Talk. This is edited by Kelly Jensen. She's done a couple other books like this. There's one called Here We Are, Feminism for the Real World that I loved. And Don't Call Me Crazy, Conversations about Mental Health, which I loved as well. This is just a whole bunch of really well-known authors and some unknown authors doing just interesting things. Um, poems, essays, graphics, conversation. I love these so much and for body talk the focus seems to be about bodies puberty sex physical body biological political listen to the contributors of this Anna Marie McLemore Eric Smith Sarah Sadie I was just talking about Peter Pan retelling Sarah Sadie did uh, never ever which I quite liked we've got Roshani Chokshi Ch uh, Alex Gino, who I know a lot of you love. Um, I haven't read from them. Julie Murphy, Nick Stone, Shane Burka, Yao Zhao. And this is also set to come out in 2020. And like nobody has it on their TBR on here. Add it. I'll make a Goodreads shelf with all these books for ease of use for you. Oh, I also added this book that doesn't have a cover and I've never heard of the author, but it's called The Inheritance Games. 
I want to make a video an overly specific recommendations about inheritance stories because I've realized it's something I like. This says it's about an eccentric puzzle obsessed billionaire who dies and leaves his fortune to a teenage girl he's never met with one stipulation. She has to move into his sprawling secret passage filled mansion alongside the family he's just de dispo dispossessed. Publication is set to 2020 with a second untitled YA to follow. Does that mean this is a series? Because it says the inheritance game's number one. Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Oh, she's written quite a few things. Okay. Hmm. I'll have to wait and see the cover of this. Just because I think it, not that I judge a book by its cover, but like, you know, two books can sound so similar. But once you see the covers, you know, like, oh, this is that vibe. So I'm interested to see. But I guess a lot of you have read from her before. So let me know what you think I'll think. I also have this book on my list called We Were Restless Things. And I'm obsessed with the cover. Again, it's by an author I've never heard of, Cole Nagamatsu. And it's set to come out in fall. Maggie Stiefvater meets Neil Gaiman, apparently, in this fantasy debut. Last summer, Link Miller drowned in the woods miles from the nearest body of water. His death was ruled a weird accident, but Naomi Amato knows the truth. Link was killed. He told her himself in the text he's been sending from beyond the grave, warning Naomi to stay away from the forest. Amberlynn, Link's sister, can't shake the feeling Naomi is hiding something. And Jonas, Naomi's new sort of stepbrother, can't get past the wall she constructed around herself. But Naomi is hiding a derringer secret even bigger than Link's ghost. Link did drown in a lake in the woods, but only she can see it. Now, if the three teens don't work together to unravel the truth about what is happening in the woods, someone else will wind up six feet under. <laughs> oh my god. Yes! I love how I get excited about books that like I already knew what they were but it's been months that they've been sitting on my shelf and I'm like oh yeah that does sound fucking great. And then lastly I want to talk about Francina Simone. Uh, that is a booktuber and author whom I absolutely love and she has a book coming out again in September. September is gonna be wild. It's called Smash It and I love the cover, and I love her, and I'm just very excited. It says, Olivia Liv James is done with letting her insecurities get the best of her. So she does what any self-respecting hot mess of a girl who wants to smash junior year does. She makes a list, a fuck it list. I love books that revolve around lists and things to accomplish. Be bold, do the things that scare me, learn to take a compliment, stand out instead of back. Now she's got a part in her school's musical production of Othello. You know I love Shakespeare shit. New friends and the attention of three very different boys. In Liv's own words, fuck it, what's the worst that can happen? The answer is a lot. I am so very excited to read this. Uh, it's always nice when like a book gets announced that already sounds like something I would like and then it happens to be from somebody who I want to also support. So like, win-win. And those are all the things that I wanted to talk about with you. Cover reveals from books I've already talked about, book announcements that have happened, just things that I want to learn more about as like more things like covers and maybe more synopsis gets revealed. Other people will start reading. I'll get to see reviews come in. Just stuff that intrigues me. And I hope maybe you learned about something that you want to read. Let me know down below. Or anything that you think has been recently announced that I would like. And I will see you in a couple days. Bye!